The Countable interface makes your classes extremely flexible if they deal with maybe storing items. Now, essentially what this will allow you to do is use PHP's count function on an object to return some count. Now, this really doesn't matter what it is, but we're gonna be implementing a collection class, which allows us to add items to a collection, and then maybe you could do something else with them, iterate through them. But what we're interested in here is being able to count them. And if you've used a framework like Laravel, you'll know that Laravel uses a collection to store things perhaps that come back from the database. And in fact, within Laravel, you can actually use count on some kind of collection. So how do we actually do this? Well, let's start to just define out a collection class and we're going to implement countable. Now I'm gonna get rid of this just for now, just so we can see what it looks like without. But in some kind of collection, the whole idea of this is that you would have some kind of items stored within here and you could have the ability to maybe pass some items into the constructor as you create a new instance of this. So maybe an array of items. You may have other methods that allow you to add items, but we'll keep this nice and simple. And then what we want to do is set them items to what we pass in. So the way that we would use this is we would say a collection, and this could be a collection of user models, anything, and we create a new collection. Now for this purpose, we're just gonna be passing into this uh, some kind of array of strings. Uh, of course, it really doesn't matter what we pass in here, the whole concept is the same. So we have one, two, and three. Now we could go and implement a count method, and that's a really good idea anyway. So if we just do this and return count, now we can use the count function in here because we can just say this items, which happens to be an array, and we can use count on an array. So if we were to echo out collection count, we would expect to see three. Let's go over here and there we go. So by bringing in the countable interface, this means that you wouldn't have to do something like if collection count and then say is greater than zero. You could actually improve on this and regardless of whether you use it, it's nice to have it in there anyway. It doesn't really take uh, much extra effort. So what we want to be able to do is say count like this collection. Now at the moment, as you'd expect, by doing this on an object, this will actually work, but we won't get back the result that we would expect. We actually get back a one. Now what we want count like this to do is represent the amount of items we have in this property. Now we already have a function called count, or a method rather called count, which allows us to retrieve this value. But as soon as we go and implement countable on here, what will happen is when we call the count function on this collection, the interface that we've defined requires that we have a count method, and that's what will be called when we use count. So if we head over to the manual, you can see this, it requires here a count method. So let's just take a look and see what this does. And there we go, we see the value three. So a tiny bit of extra effort, literally just implementing countable. And of course, if you had a class that didn't necessarily deal with counting, you could implement one anyway, and then go ahead and return a sensible value. Really depends on what you're doing. Either way, that's a very simple interface that's incredibly useful within classes, just to allow for a little bit more flexibility.